investigation. I don't see a problem with it. No, I don't Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I made them up. That was awesome. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Danker, would you do the roll call, please? Mayor Steam. Present. Councilmember Large Anderson. Present. Councilmember Carolyn. Present. Enright. Present. King. Present. Austin. Present. Jordahl. Present. Hagan. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Item number one is a motion for adoption of the agenda with the additions and changes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number two is a motion to approve the minutes from August 3rd with additions. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number three, are there any citizens present tonight that want to address the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda? It's on the agenda. We'll get to it. Marion? Thank you. My name is Marion Clennon. I live at 1711 Third Street Northeast in Austin. Um, I just wanted to propose um, a suggestion to the, the council with um, having an increase of 13% of the levy. Um, the council might want to consider bringing back coffee with the council or whatever you want to call it um, to get a lot of input from uh, the citizens around Austin. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else that wants to address the council on items that are not on tonight's agenda? If not, we'll move forward. Okay, we have number five, the consent agenda. We need a motion for that. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Under public hearing, number six is a resolution reviewing an annexation petition from Turtle Creek to Holly. Uh, yes, you should have a joint resolution in your materials. This requested annexation is approximately 40 parcels, uh, uh, including uh, 143 acres. was initiated to obtain municipal sanitary sewer services. Um, this area um, has uh, four parcels out of 40 with compliant septic systems. Um, me and Mr. L Mr. Lang and I just wanted to note that uh, we have given in this this joint resolution up to 10 years to connect to the mis municipal sewer, which would be the maximum cost deferment period, at which time the cost would be in reimbursed through either assessments or connection fees, whatever the, the council determines is the most appropriate way to re recoup those costs. The um, area being annexed for the public to see, and this is probably not um, real, uh, illuminating I guess but this is uh, County uh, County Road 46 or Oakland Avenue West and this area is just west of the Turtle Creek one annexation area and north of the County Highway the joint resolution is basically the exact resolution that we um, had done for Turtle Creek one um, there aren't really any other unusual aspects to that joint resolution other than we are annexing a uh, state wildlife management area and that will be zoned agricultural um, during this process. Does the council have any questions? Questions? If not, we need a motion to approve or deny. So moved. Second. To approve? To, to approve. approve. Uh, uh, any more discussion? Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Seven is a series of motions. Motion, a resolution, and an ordinance reviewing a requ request from Torgerson Properties, Inc. for a final PUD plan for the property located at 1701 Fourth Street Northwest. Holly. Uh, this has gone to the Planning Commission um, and the Council. Um, previously, we had a preliminary plan that was reviewed. Um, this is a recommendation from the Planning Commission to approve the final plan. Um, this is a 
plan unit development um, requested by uh, Torgerson Properties and presented on behalf of their architect, City's Edge. They, um, the area is located near the Holiday Inn and Torgies and the Days Inn and Perkins Restaurant. This is an area all owned by one individual uh, corporation. They are asking to add a hotel to that area. Um, the Planning Commission um, looked at some of the um, flexibility that was built into the planned unit development, which was the whole purpose for going this route. Um, they asked for an increase of three feet to their building height from 45 to 48 feet, allowing a minimum of 15.8% per green space. The normal amount is 20%. And um, I would just add that the final plan or the approval um, of the council, if they should so choose to approve this plan, should include um, Exhibit A and the attachments to Exhibit A. The um, sorry, <laughs> just right. trying to get my spot here. Um, the does the council have any questions, I guess? No questions? Okay, now we're gonna, okay. So we need a resolution to a, what's a PUD plan? Planned unit development. The planned unit development. Okay. This is, um, it, it's a, an overlay of our existing zoning requirement. Our existing zoning district in that area is a business district. And this is a planned development business. This okay. allows for a little bit of flexibility in the way that the property is developed within our ordinance and our zoning standards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we need a resolution to approve or deny. <coughs> so move the resolution to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. We need a motion for preparation of the zoning ordinance. So moved. Third second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And finally, we need an ordinance for adoption of the zoning ordinance. Move for adoption and publication of the ordinance. Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Ordinance passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number eight is a motion reviewing an application from James Dugan, 415th Street Southeast, for a 15 foot variance from the rear yard set, er, setback requirement for a detached garage structure. Holly. Um, yes, this is a request from Mr. Dugan. Um, it was brought to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission has recommended to the Council that the Council grant the variance. Um, this recommendation um, comes with the following findings of the Planning Commission, that the requested variance is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the zoning ordinance. Um, this is a residential area and he proposes to add a detached garage, which is um, within keeping of the um, residential nature of the neighborhood. That the variance, if granted, would not alter the essential character of the locality in which the property is located. Again, he's proposing a, a typical residential use. Um, that there are circumstances unique to the property not created by the landowner. Um, Mr. Dugan is um, following all of the other um, requirements. Um, he wants to uh, develop his property to the maximum allowed, um, which he has determined and the Planning Commission has determined. Um, requires his his building to be in the area where it is currently located um, and that the landowner intends to use the land in a reasonable manner not permitted by the ordinance um, uh, there's a diagram that I included in the information if the council has any questions I see mr. Dugan is here also if the council has any questions of him just, yes. out, just out of curiosity, Dukes, how are you going to get to that? How are you going to access that garage? Have a drive through, through the uh, existing garage. Through, through it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Looks Any good. more questions? No. Then we need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item number nine is a motion approving 2016 Hormel Foundation grant applications. I think we pretty much, we did that at our last work session. Anybody want to speak on that before we get to it? I should add, Your Honor, the uh, 
the rankings 1 through 13 are there. Um, but in addition to that, there was a late request from um, the HRA for that business encouragement and enhancement program, which is the old downtown revitalization program for 75000 So we've just included that as unranked with okay. your list of stuff. Let them decide. Yep. Okay. With that, we need a motion. So moved. Two Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Number 10 is a resolution accepting donations to the city of Austin. Need a resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Number 11 is a motion authorizing the City of Austin to be the fiscal agent for the community band, Tom. Huh? The City Council has done this over the last couple of years for the community band so that they could solicit donations towards their um, program. And they're just asking us to be the fiscal agent, the fiscal host, which merely means we take a couple checks in, and then when we give them their community band allocation for the next year, we gross it up with the donations we received. So we just request council authorization to do that again for the community band so they can try to raise some additional funds for their agency. Questions? If not, we need a motion. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Number 12 is a resolution approving a purchase agreement with Austin Utilities for their portion of City Hall and parking lots. Mr. Dankert. The Austin Utilities at their last meeting uh, approved the sale between the City of Austin and the Austin Utilities for the pre-negotiated price of $275,000 plus four acres of land out in the Cook Farm site. What the city will get is the half of City Hall that is owned by the Austin Utilities, the back parking lot, and the entire Riverside Arena parking lot in return for that cash and the four acres out at the Cook Farm site. Council, do you have any questions? If not, we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? We have a second? Second. Tom? Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 13 is a resolution approving a police liaison officer agreement with Austin Public Schools. Chief? This resolution we've had in years uh, in place. Uh, it's the two school resource officers, one at Ellis Middle School and one at Austin High School, where the school district does pay 80% of the salary of those two officers. Okay. Council, if there's nothing, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Banker. Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 14 is resolution recommending changes to the Austin City Charter to the Austin Charter Commission. Mr. Hoverstein. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the, the recommended changes are to uh, eliminate the specific job descriptions of appointed city officials and uh, establish those uh, job descriptions either by ordinance or resolution. This is an action taken under the state law to forward these recommendations under the Charter Commission. The Charter Commission will then consider them and if they so approve, will return to the City Council uh, their recommendation for adoption by ordinance of these changes. Uh, hearings will be required in publications and so forth, but ultimately it will come back to the City Council for adoption by ordinance. Thank you. Council. I just have one question. Do you have a sense, David, of the time frame of this process? Well, I think right now the City staff, the Clerk's Office is trying to uh, put together a meeting of the Charter Commission. This month, okay, and so uh, there there are some publication. I don't have them right in mind, sure. but some publication time limits and uh, public hearing limits, and then you have to wait after the adoption of the ordinance because I think under our charter, uh, by petition, uh, citizens reaching so many. Uh, registered voters can object to the charter changes and call for an election. Okay, thank you. Anything else? If not, we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6-0, Your Honor. Thank you. 15 is 
I believe a resolution, two resolutions authorizing work as part of the Minnesota Department of Trans Transportation's Highway 105 reconstruction project. Stephen. Yes, as we discussed at the previous work session, um, MnDOT is planning to reconstruct Highway 105 through Austin next summer. And as part of that, there will be some costs associated with that project that are the responsibility of the city. In this case, uh, with these two resolutions in front of you, we're looking at, uh, as we talked about, the, the installation of rapid flashing beacons for pedestrian crossings uh, around the Banfield School area. Those would be on Oakland Avenue West at 16th Street and 19th Street and also on 12th Street Southwest at 3rd Avenue. Uh, in addition to that, we also discussed the installation of additional shared lane bike symbols. As part of the project, the, the project will go uh, south to the Turtle Creek Bridge on 12th Street. And in that area from Quick Trip south to the Turtle Creek Bridge, there will be bicycle symbols installed as part of the project. And this resolution also includes uh, the city authorizing uh, MnDOT authorizing the city to continue those bike symbols from the Turtle Creek Bridge south to 16th Avenue and they will tie in with some symbols that council previously approved earlier this summer. So those two resolutions are included and the costs associated with those would be paid out of our state aid account. Council, anything? If not, we need a resolution for the shared lane bike symbols. So moved. Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. And 15B, we need another resolution for pedestrian activated rectangular rapid flashing beacon. So Maybe. move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 16 is two resolutions approving permanent easements for public infrastructure. Stephen? As part of the Turtle Creek One Sanitary Sewer Project, uh, we acquired, worked with different property owners there to extend the municipal services to Turtle Creek One area. And in, as part of doing that, we needed to acquire a couple easements. In this case, we have acquired two easements and the property owners have requested uh, some hold harmless language be included as part of those easements. And we have included some standard documentation and wording for those and part of that would uh, require council approval. So at this time we would be requesting council approval to approve these two easements, one with uh, the Chamber property and the other one would be the Overrocker property. Questions? Um, do, it, do you still need to find uh, more properties for easements or is this satisfied? This is it. If Thank there are no more questions, we need a resolution A easement with Arlen Chamber and Mary J. Chamber. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. And B easement with Kenneth Overrocker and Anisheta Overrocker. So moved the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 17 is a resolution calling for a public hearing for September 8, 2015, for sanitary sewer and water improvements for scattered properties recently annexed into the city of Austin. We need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember at Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 18 is re <coughs> resolution authorizing a contract for video streaming community interest segments. Mr. Clark. Mayor, members, uh, on our city webpage, we had a contract with CGI Communications to produce different segments on quality of life economic development, arts and entertainment, health care and the like. Uh, our agreement with them ends in September and we'd like to renew uh, that same effort but work with local uh, contractors. For that we received two proposals from Video Arts as well as KSMQ uh, for production of similar videos. Uh, staff would recommend using KSMQ and use the 
um, advertising component for 5800 and move forward with that to update that on the city's webpage. Council, anything? If not, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Council Member Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. 19 is a resolution declaring the property located at 911 12th Avenue Northeast a hazardous structure. If there are no questions, we need a resolution. So moved. Is there a second? second? Mr. Dankert. Council Member Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. We have removed 20. 21 is a resolution declaring the property located at 1402 First Place Southeast a hazardous structure. We need a resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Resolution 22 is declaring the property located at 1209 Fifth Avenue Southwest a hazardous structure. We need a resolution. So moved. Second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 23 is a series of motions granting the Planning and Zoning Department authorization to remove junk and or illegally stored vehicles at the following locations. A, 1801 First Avenue Northeast Morgan property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. B, 605 Ninth Avenue Southwest the Foth property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. C, 1009 10th Avenue Southwest, the Hammerding property. So moved. <coughs> Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And finally, D, 1014 11th Avenue Southwest, the Novak property. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And with our additions, now 24 <laughs> is a motion authorizing $500 in support towards the bike friendly community designation from contingency funds. Mr. <laughs> Mayor, members, this is complimentary to our city's designation as a bike-friendly community. Um, we'd like to participate in the study uh, moving forward so that we can get, receive that designation. Council action is requested to approve the $500 to participate in the assessment. Anybody speaking on this? If not, we need a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 25 is a resolution. Amending the finding of fact and order in regard to Rock the Dog owned by Sophia Smith. It, okay, this is me and, and David, but first let me explain how we got here because we have not discussed this since the last meeting. I've talked about it with Craig and maybe one or two of the council people. But after we, the last the two weeks ago when we had our meeting, the next day I received a phone call from a person who said, they would be willing to come to Austin from New York, pick the dog up, take it back, retrain it, and put it with the family. I said, that's it? They said, that's it. I said, well, we'll have to check into it, but this is something we may be interested in. By the time I got to work and talked to the city clerk, the person had called and said, the mayor says it's okay for us to come to Austin and do a fundraiser. I knew nothing about a fundraiser. We did some checking in, uh, into that organization and determined that that was not somebody we could work with. In the meantime, I received another call from Rough Start Rescue, I believe, from Henderson, I think it is, Minnesota, from a lady who was very nice, very kind. She said she had watched the meeting that we had where we had, had determined that we were going to euthanize the dog. She could see that we were having you know that it wasn't an easy decision and would they would we allow them to come down and test the dog and if deemed viable release the dog to a rescue the dog would not come back to Austin and it would go to probably a rural setting is what I thought she had said so she came down a couple I think it was last week and tested the dog I talked to her this morning and she said there were seven testing I was there I, I saw her at the shelter and then I, I wasn't there for the test, but she said there were seven tests that they give the dog. One is perfect, 
five is a fail, three is an average, and the dog did no worse than two on any of them. So in meeting with David and, and uh, Craig, we discussed it, and I think that this is probably a good way to go. A lot of questions are from people are, are we gonna do this for every dog? We're not gonna do this for every dog. Generally, when we have a dog come up, like this, they've already damaged either a human or another dog. There's no doubt in our mind what we want to do. I think the council was a little bit reluctant on this one. And will we consider this in the future? Quite possibly we will, but generally the dogs we get, this is not something that we would consider. But if one comes up similar to this, it's an option we may want to consider. So I know there's going to be people that want to speak on this. I've gotten comments from at both sides on people. So council, what do you think? David, oh yeah, I probably should let you talk about the legality of everything. Yeah. Pr procedurally, uh, it is my understanding that the previous uh, order and resulting resolution would be amended in one regard. That, that the, the order and the resolution established or found that the dog owned by Sophia Smith, known as Rock, was a dangerous dog under ordinance. That will not change. The second part of that was an appeal from the uh, requirement that the dog be destroyed. The, the council did uphold that, that order as well. So the amendment that's being proposed today would eliminate the order that the dog be destroyed, contingent upon ownership of the dog being transferred from Sophia Smith to the rescue organization, number one, and number two, that the dog be removed from the jurisdiction, including all of Moore County, which includes the city of Austin, never to return. Uh, with those two conditions, then that would be, that would be the, uh, the conditions that would be imposed uh, for release of the dog to the organization. And I have talked to Ms. Smith. She is happy with this. She thinks this is the best way for us to go. Also, this organization, Rough Start Ready has never even mentioned money. There is no charge. If you want to make a donation, you can go to their website, make a donation. Money was never mentioned. And I think in the future, that would be the way we continue it. When somebody says they're going to charge us or do a fundraiser, I don't think that's something we're going to be involved in. But not this organization is very, from what I can see, if you go to their website and, and look at it, uh, and I've been in contact them with them probably eight or nine times. There's two of them I've been talking to. They would have come down tonight. It's a five-hour trip, and I told we, they couldn't pick up the dog tonight, so I told them I didn't think it was necessary. If we do have issues, oh, they are here. You want to come up and talk to us about it? You must be, I talked to you on, did I talk to you on the phone? I'm Chris Maddox. Chris Maddox, yes. okay. Yeah, I'm more than happy to address any questions that anybody has. Okay. Uh, but I am. I am on the board of directors for Rough Start Rescue, and we also are the third largest rescue in the state of Minnesota. We are not a shelter. We are a foster-based rescue, so all of the animals do go in a home setting, in an environment, in a foster care situation. We do also pay particular attention with bully breeds, so in addition to being on the board of directors, um, I play another role, and that's bully breed intake coordinator. So any pit bull type dog, um, like Rock is, I play a key role in. I temperament test or am involved in viewing and assessing all of the dogs. Um, over the course of the past 13 months I've been in this role, I have temperament tested over 75 dogs. We've rescued over 73 locally, place them in foster homes or place them in adoptive homes. Um, we take very um, good care in determining the foster home that we place them in to be sure it's a good sitting, to setting, to be sure that they're familiar with the breed. It's very important to me that we set them up for success so we're not putting a dangerous dog any place. And we'll be assessing Rock as well to be sure how he is with other animals, how he is with humans, how he is with kids, because we will never place a dog that is unpredictable or that we could be concerned could be aggressive. There's a huge liability to us, which is probably what you've faced as well in the past couple of weeks. So in the temperament test that was mentioned, there are seven different things that we go through. I won't go through it with you. Um, but yes, Rock temperament tested very well. Um, he likely hasn't had any training, and he's just um, a goofy, big pit bull, which understandably can be a big concern when they're running loose and is a nuisance. So I understand the decision that was made earlier, and it's a risk. I feel very confident um, that he is trainable and is placeable, like most of the 73 animals I've come in contact with over the past 13 months. Have you had any issues with the 73 you've placed? We have not, no. What about the two you didn't place? 
Um, they're all still either in foster care. We haven't placed 73, let me um, take that back. We have rescued over the course of the past 13 months, we've rescued 73. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. I, I wanna say it's like 57 which have been placed and the others are still in foster care. Um, the animals can be in foster care anywhere from a typical adult dog usually, usually ranges from one to three months and a puppy is usually adopted out within about six weeks. Pit bull type dogs can range the spectrum. We've had them adopted out within about two weeks. We've also had them in the rescue for up to two years where we are constantly taking care of them and being sure that um, they're fine and their temperament is good. They're usually adopted out within about six months. A and again, that's assuming that, um, that they're, they've been trained and they're placeable and, and we're confident that they're going to be good in a home setting. And I'd just like to say too, a lot of assumptions were made that this was people that were irresponsible owners. And I've had a lot of contact with Sophie Smith since then. She's a single parent, she's busy, she's got kids in the home. Inattentive maybe, but not irresponsible. She took the pet because a relative or somebody had it and basically her story was she felt it was gonna be destroyed if she didn't. By the time she realized that it was a handful, she'd already fallen in love with her and the kids. And this will probably happen again in Austin. I'm sure it happens all over. So I think, you know, it's not necessarily irresponsible people. This could happen to just about anybody. And maybe you wanna speak a little bit to ownership of a breed like this. I think that's what we need to stress to the people is if you're gonna get a breed like this, you, you can't treat them like a, a Labrador retriever, is it? am I correct? Exactly, so I'm familiar with the breed and, and anybody who is fostering um, a bully type dog or adopting, I usually am the one or a placement coordinator that focuses with the bully breeds and works with the potential adopters. We have a very pointed conversation with them and, and I, I love the breed, it's all that I do. I have three at home right now. Um, but you do need to be very familiar with the breed. They are very maligned. They've got um, bad representation in the press. So it's important that you understand the breed. They can be very strong, they can be bullheaded. So it's important that you be a good solid leader. It's important that you not put them in a situation to fail because of what could happen. Um, and, so, and their temperament is typically very good with people. They rank one of the best when it comes to temperament testing and personalities in terms of being around people and kids. Um, one of the things sometimes that causes a problem is they don't always like other animals um, or dogs particularly or cats and we bred that into them. So it's something that we make everybody very well aware of as well, um, particularly our foster homes. When we're placing them there, people need to be aware that you need to do slow proper introductions. You just don't bring a pit bull into the house with other resident dogs and let them loose. Um, they need to be familiar with what's called a two week shutdown. Um, where you basically bring the dog in and you just help them decompress and deacclimate. It usually takes the dog about two <coughs> weeks to show their true colors and their true personalities. They're all about routine, so you bring them into a new and foreign situation. You're not gonna know how they're going to react, so let them just decompress and let them settle, and then you have to do in slow, slow proper introductions with um, other dogs, and you always do that in a neutral territory. You don't do it inside the house. You take them off the property and let them um, get to meet one another. So we always walk them through the pros and cons of the breed, basically the good and the bad and the ugly that I say, because it's important that a foster home be 110% committed because it's, it's difficult to find fosters and adopters for this breed just because of, um, mostly because of the, the press and the, the misunderstanding. But they can be very awesome um, family dogs. Again, I have three in my house. They don't make a good first pet for somebody. Yes. I mean, it yeah. would take a knowledgeable owner to really handle one the way they should be handled. Is that correct? Uh, it, it, not always, but as long as they understand the breed, um, it, it can be a good first pet. And they often get along well with other dogs and sometimes cats as well. It's just important to understand them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions from council? Uh, how would we be assured that that the dog would not be um, come back to Moore County as, as uh, David Horston? Yeah, well, we would be completely transparent. Uh, first off, our committed foster is very experienced in the breed and she is in a rural area and has experience with training and we also provide training resources as well. So we're committed to training and working with Rock before we would ever place him. And if there's any potential adopter, transparency is very important to us. So we would certainly share with them um, everything that's gone on in his past to make it very clear to him that he can't come back to this jurisdiction. Absolutely, we'd be transparent in that. Now we're gonna be drawing up an agreement, is that right, Mr. Holverson? That they would have to sign to get, uh, as far as not bringing them back and stuff, to, to get custody of the dog. And I'm just wondering, will this be shared with the owner where it eventually goes? Yes. Okay. Okay. Council, any more questions? Yeah, I have a question about, um, like the mayor mentioned that uh, two was the worst on the one to five scale that mm -hmm. Rock had um, been. Um, where, where is like the threshold where a dog would not be rescuable, I guess? Um, well, first and foremost, if there's any documented bite history, I, I, we wouldn't um, 
probably be one to Is that take. biting a human or other dogs? I, it's, it's particularly a human. Um, we would have to take into consideration what the circumstances were, if there was animal aggression. Again, that can be apparent sometimes in the pit bulls, um, but not if there's a human bite. We wouldn't be able to take that on us. And um, the, I, I, the, we can talk later, but I would have a question about the dangerous dog designation. The challenge for us would be if that follows him past your jurisdiction, then it will become very difficult for us to adopt him out because of the higher insurance and, and everything else that goes with that. So we have no problem in this jurisdiction and making it transparent to the adopter that he can't come back here. If that designation follows him, um, it will be a challenge for us. David? Well, we go under local ordinance. We don't, uh, and the, the state, there's a state law with, uh, with regard to dangerous animals. That also provides that local jurisdictions or cities can have their own ordinances. So our ordinance is somewhat different than uh, the state law, which I think requires some registration if it's a dangerous dog. And I don't believe our ordinance requires that. So this is just a finding that is from the facts and the occurrences that happened with regard to this dog. The council did find the dog is dangerous. and the the uh, ordinance doesn't does not require that the dog be destroyed and it does not require that that list of items uh, with regard to uh, muzzling and and chips and all that it says the council may require those things and so there's some jurisdictions if I'm not mistaken that declare all pit bulls as dangerous and they're not even allowed well to under do state it. law that's illegal that's illegal but in other states it is legal I've people have called me and talked to me about that yes. so it, I mean you'll have to take that into consideration mm -hmm. you know I know we've talked about it I don't think council is gonna rescind the you know what, what we've done on that point understood yeah. so but it's a local you know it's just a lo local designation and they can take yep. that yep. You know. understood any more from council yeah so with uh, the thing will this dog need to be chipped then to leave our facility like no the, the understanding was that the dog would be released to the rescue organization and that they would, they would train it to the point they felt necessary or the foster family would train it to the point they felt necessary and it would be placed with a responsible, knowledgeable family. And the dog would not return to this jurisdiction. In other words, we're not gonna go and try to direct what the future owners up in Crow Wing County or Benton County or Stearns County has to do with this dog. You may disagree with that or agree with it, but that's kind of the understanding we had to resolve this matter. I guess my concern with that would be that, how do we know that the dog won't, I mean, enforcing it not coming back to the community, like if if it comes back and it's not chipped or something, how do we know it's that dog or, you know? Well, obviously I can't guarantee that yeah. nor can this gentleman guarantee that we have to it's sometimes we have to rely upon the good faith of people and obviously if it comes to the knowledge the dog is back in the jurisdiction will be brought before the the council and the council will can order the dog seized and go through the procedure again and have it destroyed and I think I can address part of that so we um, we will not adopt out any animal prior to us altering the animal fully vetting the animal, being sure they're up to date on vaccinations, and we microchip every animal prior to adoption. Okay, anything else from council? If I, not, I, we I, need I think this seems like a fair resolution and I'd make the motion that we amend the finding of facts and let Rock be adopted out Second. this organization. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's a, re it's, a it's, a it's a resolution. It's a resolution. It's a resolution. Oh, okay, Tom. Councilmember uh, Carolyn. Aye. Enright. Aye. King. Aye. Austin. Aye. Jordahl. Aye. Councilmember Large Anderson. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Okay. Sorry, Marv, we got the voting before you got your hand up. Go ahead. Thank you, Mary. Mayor. If you were standing here, I wanted to give you a hug, not a kiss, but to say, <laughs> uh, I, as a citizen, really appreciate your work. And if necessary, I, as a citizen, would personally hold you accountable to the promises that you've worked out with our uh, uh, attorney and the people here and especially uh, Mike Jordahl is very happy he was the one person I think that voted for keeping this uh, dog alive is my memory right is that Mike or Jeremy? but uh, we you, you um, 
have helped us a great deal as a community because it's been a community involvement to what to do with this dog. And I'm uh, sure that uh, Miss Smith working with you and with this uh, dog, I uh, appreciate it personally. From a kid, I've been close to pigeons and kittens and dogs all my life, and that will not stop. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, with that, we are to final reports. Why don't we start with Judy tonight? Nothing, Your Honor. Steve, nothing, Your Honor. Uh, I have nothing, Your Honor. Um, the Austin Artworks Festival mm -hmm. is this weekend, um, and lots of free events uh, at the uh, across the street here at the power plant and also on Main Street. There's a uh, go to the website and check out all the details. One of the fun things is going to be something new with bubbles, people blowing bubbles, so kids might enjoy that on noon on Saturday. Uh, how many people can blow bubbles at the same time? Uh, and also tomorrow night is the Community Sing, a new event also being organized, and it's at uh, Veterans, Banshell Park at 6.30. Community what? Community sing. Oh, sing. Come on down and sing, I guess. What time is that at? 6.30? I think it's at 6.30. Yeah, it's at 6.30 with free ice cream. Oh, yeah. And if you sing, you get free ice cream. Mm -hmm. You have to sing? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think they're going to, like, check you monitors. off. If you didn't sing, no ice cream. Monitors. Okay, so that's all I've got. Mike. Nothing, Your Honor. Jeremy. Nothing, Your Honor. Greg. No, sir. Uh, Chief Krieger has an item. Mayor and City Council, I just want to report that former police officer, Lieutenant Joe Carpenter, passed away yesterday. Uh, he was residing in Durand, Wisconsin, and I just wanted to advise you. Thank you. I knew Joe for many years. used to go fishing with him. Do we have any more reports, Tom? If not, we need a motion to adjourn until <coughs> the next meeting. So moved. Second. Second. On September 8th. Uh, second. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. We'll take a five minute break and meet in the small conference.